right, so this week you're going to learn how to play a really cool electric blues lead that you can play by yourself. No jam track is needed for this. And this is played in the style of Cream, one of my all-time favorite bands and probably the ultimate power trio band. We're talking about Eric Clapton, Jack Bruce, Ginger Breaker. Cream, the power trio. And so normally if you hear any kind of Cream style lesson, there's a jam track that goes with it because they were such a hard driving, you know, jam band. But I thought it'd be cool to do something that didn't require a jam track and so that you can still get that kind of driving electric blues lead, uh, but without the jam track. And how can you do that when you don't have any sort of notes underneath it? So we're going to be hinting at those notes as we play through this, but it's really all just the pentatonic scales. It's minor pentatonic scale for the most part, and one little part will switch over into the major pentatonic scale. And we're playing in the key of the song, so we're not necessarily worrying about playing the chord changes. Even though it's happening, we're not thinking that way. We're thinking about just playing the A minor pentatonic scale or the A major pentatonic scale. And I'll show you how to hint at those chords as they pass by, even though they're not passing by. It's going to make sense as we get into it. So I've got the lesson split into two parts. In this video, we'll go through the first half. If you'd like to learn the second half, as well as download the tablature and also access the on-screen tab viewer, you can get all of those things by going to activemelody.com. Go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP450. It's hard for me to believe that we're celebrating EP 450 already. It seems like just yesterday we were celebrating. I was doing the EP 400. Uh, now it's 50 weeks after that. Wow, it's amazing. Time goes by quick. Um, but anyway, and what's going to happen at EP 500? That's the question. I don't know. We'll have to find out. Uh, let me mention tone in this. Uh, it sounds like... <laughs> Sounds like I've got this big Marshall full stack amp. You know, it's got that nice overdriven tone and just a big sound. But in actual fact, I wish I could get up and turn this camera around. I'm playing through a little Spark practice amp. And that's where all the sound is coming from. We're talking about a $200 practice amp. I have no affiliation with Spark. Uh, but I like to plug them because they really do make an excellent product, I must say. And so that's what I'm doing. I didn't go in. There's a million settings. I could go into delays and all kinds of stuff that you can do with the Spark amp. I didn't do any of that. I plugged in. I turned up the gain. And I turned up the re reverb. <laughs> And this is the sound I've got. And what I'm doing is I'm actually running out of the headphone jack and into my laptop. I just like to kind of play around with different sounds. Um, and I wanted to do that too because I know uh, a lot of you are on a budget and a lot of you actually have the Spark Amp anyway. So you don't have to have this big elaborate setup to have a cool sound. Um, okay, so that's what I'm doing tone-wise is playing through the Spark. Um, Let's talk about this song. Now, this is played in the key of A, and it's a 1-4-5, so our one chord is an A, our four chord would be a D, and our five chord would be an E. Now, you don't have chords underneath you, but you can still sort of tell where they are by the notes that I'm landing on as I play through this. And I'll explain what that is. I'll explain these notes that I'm landing on as we get to them. But the first thing that I started with, and by the way, we're going to start here in the A minor pentatonic scale pattern one. So that's where, if, to, to connect it to a chord shape from caged, we can think of our E shape. These three fingers make the E shape, and we can think of pattern one. That's kind of like the home base for most of us. When we learn our pentatonic scales, we kind of start there. Um, because it's just easy, two notes per string, and it's just simple to visualize and play. So that's where we're starting. And the first thing that I do is actually slide from pattern one into pattern two, but it's like this. It goes right into it. That's the first few notes we're going to learn. So bar the first two strings on the fifth fret, and you know where those are coming from. Minor pentatonic scale pattern one. And then we're going to slide up to 10th fret, second string. Uh, and this note is an A note, same note as this note. And that's a very common blues technique. Clapton does it quite a bit, but every other blues guy does too. Is to hit the note and then slide into the note. You hear that quite a bit. It's just a powerful, punchy little thing. And when you're playing in the E, you can play them at the same time, which is real powerful. Um, okay. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is hit this 8th fret 1st string, but when I hit that, I'm pushing it sharp. That's a key signature thing to do for that Clapton sound. Did I say that right? A key, a key Clapton signature sound thing is to 
play the third, in this case it would be the minor third, and push it towards the third. So you can also do it, there's two main spots where that happens when we're in this pattern one, pattern two of the minor pentatonic scale. First would be this little box, this note. So you're pushing it from minor to major third. Same thing here, six, or eighth fret first string, same note. Um, but anyway, when Clapton's playing a lead, uh, he still does that to this day, but especially in the Cream era, Blues Breakers with John Mayall, I hear that a lot more. Where he's pushing that note, every time he hits it, he's always pushing it into the, into the major a little bit. Whether the song is minor or major, he just kind of teeters on the edge of that. And, and obviously he didn't invent that. I hear Albert King do that quite a bit, and a lot of uh, blues guys, Lightning Hopkins would even do it. I mean, it's just a very common thing that goes all the way back. So that's the first little phrase. Now when I came up here, we went into pattern two. So pattern one is here, pattern two, is here, this little box, and it's connected to pattern one, the, the two are connected. And this is just a nice example of sliding from pattern one to pattern two, and then we're gonna go back into pattern one. So it's... The next phrase goes... So... And actually, when I played that, uh, on listening back to it, I didn't bend like this. I mean, I did bend, but I, you didn't hear me play through the bend. What you heard was the pre-bend like this. So I went ahead and pushed it into position, then hit the note, as opposed to going the way that we might normally do it. I, a lot of times, uh, blues guys will do that. They'll go. So you start at the top. Oh, I see there, I just screwed it up. It's like this. And that is a muscle control thing. You'll learn you know, by doing lots and lots of bends how to do that, but you're doing a full bend. You're trying to hit this note. That's the note you're trying to match. You just want to make sure that you put the right amount of tension. You don't want to underdo it. That's not enough. You just got to go all the way up. So it's that note, uh, and then you play the 10th fret first string without the bend, and then eight, 10, eight on the first string. And then there's the 10th fret second string. Now this is all in that uh, pattern two, but it's, and then, and that's how I concluded the phrase. So 10th fret, 2nd string, 9th fret, 3rd string, back to the 10th fret, 2nd string. And again, pattern 2. All right, let's put those two pieces together, play from the top. The other thing I should talk about is where to start this thing. It doesn't actually start on the 1, it starts on the measure before that. So it's starting like the and of 4, so you'd be like, one, and two, and three, and four. And once you slide into that note, that's the one. Okay, so the that's the pickup note that happens in the measure prior to. So it's one, and two, and three, and four. Okay, so from here we have... Now watch this. That's the next thing. We're going to slide from pattern two back to pattern one. Pretty easy. We're just following this little bridge here. So we're going to start here on the eighth fret, uh, eighth fret second string, ninth fret third string, and as soon as we play this, we slide back into pattern one. So that'd be down to the seventh fret third string. And then watch this. So that's five, seven, five on the second string, starting on the third string. And then we go back to the 5th fret 3rd string. Pull that sharp a little bit. We do that every time we hit that note. And then 7th fret 4th string. We hit that twice. That's a cool little lick by itself. So. Now remember, with all of these things, take any of these licks and just think about using them in other things. So like, if you don't want to sit and memorize this whole thing, that's totally fine. But take any of these little phrases like, 
and work those into your playing. That's kind of what I'm hoping you get out of this. I mean, if you want to memorize it and have a song to play on your own, that's awesome. But there's sort of two ways you can use this content. Um, now after this, I went. Let's look at that. Classic Clapton cream move. So it's really, it's just building the triad, the A triad out of that bar chord where you bar in the fifth fret. So it starts by barring the first three strings on the fifth fret and we hammer onto the sixth fret third string. And then we play strings two and one behind this bar here on the fifth fret. So it's, now after you hit the first string, you go like this. Classic move from that era, these kind of pull-offs, you know, it's a pull-off and then a, a pick on the upstroke. So we're doing a pull-off between the 8th fret 2nd string and the 5th fret 2nd string. And then 7th fret 3rd string, you do an upstroke with your right hand. So it's like this. It's a downstroke with your right hand to start the pull-off, and then an upstroke. So it's like that. And you can repeat it like this if you want. Now, I didn't do that for this part, but but we will do that again in, in just a minute. We'll do one up here. Uh, um, so anyway, we have... So from here... We have... And then after that, it's... Now, this is another real classic uh, kind of cream style lick that's played um, right in the middle of p uh, minor pentatonic scale pattern one. So it's a full, or it's a bend, bend and release on the seventh fret third string, fifth fret third string, and then seventh fret fourth string, but then watch this. Then you hit the seventh fret third string. So that ring finger plays the, allows you to play the fourth string and the third string in the same fret. And then we go back to uh, five, seven, fret fourth string so it's fifth fret third string and then two full bends on the seventh fret third string like this and then you put vibrato in that bend that's a really hard thing to do and I always say that every time I do these and I, uh, I try not to do that that often because I know that's frustrating to some people now you can use a tremolo if you've got one of those I mean or whammy bar um, you don't even have to apply vibrato. I mean, there's no right answer with this, but that's the sound. That's the Clapton sound is to do a full bend. And then vibrato at the top of the bend. You just have to practice it over and over again. Okay, let's take it from the start. I'll play through it slowly and we'll play up to that point. One and two and three and four. Now after that, it's, that's the next line. So it's really a repeat of what we just did. So that's the same. That's the bend on the seventh fret, third string. Then play the seventh fret, third string without the bend. Fifth fret, seventh fret, fourth string. And then we go. So it's seven, five, seven. Third string, fourth string. And then we go back to the 5th fret 3rd string and then we land on this note which is the 7th fret 3rd string and it's a D note because we're now going, that's the point in, in the song, in the solo, where the band, if a band was playing, would be playing a D chord, they go to the 4 chord. So you go, and then I hit the open D string. I actually did it by accident when I was when I was playing it but I, but I let it ring out because that's the note that we sh that would be there if there was a bass player. Like that. So. And you can hear, now we're at the four chord part of the song. Right? So now everything I play here is going to make sense in context of being the four chord being behind it. So after you hit that D note, and then you hit the, the low D note, the open string, I came down and went fifth fret, seventh fret on the third string again. And then watch this. 
This is a slide, this is a classic move uh, that you can get a lot of mileage out of, just this. So we're gonna slide back into this little hook, this little blues hook. You hear that in lots of blues stuff. It's just the bottom part of pattern two. Um, ninth fret, third string, eighth fret, second string. And then we're gonna slide that up two frets. And what that does is that puts me in major pentatonic scale pattern four for the key of the song. Forget the fact that we're playing over a D chord now, that doesn't matter. We're just staying in the key of the song. So everything I play lead-wise is really just A minor pentatonic scale or A major pentatonic scale. From time to time, I'll, I'll highlight a note where, where, where a note should be like for the D chord, for, you know, for the four chord. But other than that, I'm still staying in the pentatonics. So this is another thing that, you know, when I realized this, it, it opened up a whole new world that I can go from this little hook this little uh, pattern two, and I can slide up two frets, and I can be playing the major pentatonic scale pattern four. So anyway, that's that was a, a, a big eye opener for me. That they're just these, you know, this little slide here to get from one to the other. Okay, let's take it from the D. So it's. And then I went. While that D is still ringing out underneath it. So there's that pull off again. That's that same lick that we just did down here, but now we're doing it between the 11 or the 13th fret second string down to the 10th fret second string. It's a down stroke with the right hand. And then we do an up stroke uh, on the third string, but that's 11th fret there. We're going to come back to this lick in just a minute. This is another classic Clapton cream style lick. Um, so anyway, that's major pentatonic though. So it's um, from the D, it's... Um, there's that bend, 12th fret, 2nd string. And then watch this. We're gonna end this lesson, this part one right here. This is another classic move. This is just pattern two of the minor pentatonic. But we're gonna bar the first two strings on the uh, eighth fret. We're gonna start on the first string with an upstroke. And then watch this. So we're gonna hit the second string, do a hammer on to the 10th fret second string, and then another upstroke on the first string. So it's like this. And you can just repeat that. So it's like this. You hear that done quite a bit um, from, from uh, Clapton in that era. So I just did it twice. And then I, I went right back into pattern one. Whoops. Put my middle finger on that ninth fret third string, quick slide back to the seventh fret, and then five seven five seven and then I concluded with so that's five seven on the third string and then there's pushing that fifth fret third string sharp so it goes and and then there's obviously another part to this which I'm going to save for the part two video but I wanted to at least get this bit of it out there uh, to get you going and that's quite a bit there's a lot of licks that you can you can glean from this and start using in your own playing let me back up and play through it from the beginning one more time I'll go through it slowly and we'll play it up to that point uh, and then I'll see you in part two where we'll finish the rest of it and remember as a premium member you'd have access to the tablature and the on-screen tab viewer as well so you can loop it and slow it down and have full playback control okay one and two and three and four 